So what's the best charger between the MagSafe Duo, Mophie 3-in-1 wireless charging pad, a random Amazon brand, the Anchor 3-in-1 stand, the Belkin 3-in-1 boost charge, the Pataka Air Omni Lite, Nomad Base Station, and the Base Station Pro, the Logitech Powered, and the Scosh Base Links. Damn, that is a lot of chargers. How much money do we spend? Mm hmm, hold on, I'm on it. We spent. Beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, 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 like $1,400? <laughs> That's so much money. <laughs> so based on our four criteria, which includes charge speed, solo charging, as well as charge consistency, and the overall function and design, the top three products, there's a bunch of ties, include this product, this product, this product, uh, Apple Touch product, and this one. So for the rest of this video, we're gonna dig into the details and then give you our recommendations. I'm also gonna rant. Darren might rant. Monty? Roll the review. Now when it comes to the design of each charge pad, they generally look the same. There's a place for your watch, space for your AirPods, and a place for your device or devices. When it comes down to it, Val and I based our design functionality scores on the number of ports each product had, the materials used, the number of devices you could charge at any given time, and other special features, and special annoyances. When it comes to these multi-device chargers, basically the more things you can charge at once, the better it's going to score. Now the best product from a design and functionality perspective only is the Scosh base links. It can charge a pile of devices at once and is modular so you can scale up and down your charging needs. Smart! The runner up in terms of functionality and design is the Pataka Air Omni Lite. Like the base links, there's a ton of space for you to charge whatever device you want. The most notable feature is the ability to travel with this product because everything folds down neatly so nothing kind of juts out and gets in the way. Now you do have to provide your own Apple Watch charger which is silly but Pataka makes up for that shortcoming by having the charger area slowly pop up by a press of a button. Also, there's a small compartment for your valuables or gummy bears. Now, if you need a charging solution for yourself and not an army, the Nomad Base Station, not the Pro, just the normal base station, is gonna be your best bet. It'll charge your iPhone, watch AirPods, and another iPhone in an awkward manner, and two other accessories that you want to plug in. Almost as much functionality, but in a much smaller form factor. Now, if you need another alternative to the Nomad Base Station, do check out the Logitech Powered. I am very impressed with this product. I really like where they place the Apple Watch charger. Your straps will never get in the way if you're charging with the Logitech Powered, which is something I can't say for some of these other products. Now the worst design product is this Amazon branded KVM, KPPM, whatever product. The charge pad is clumsy and it doesn't charge your AirPods wirelessly. So one of the things I forgot to mention with this Logitech Powered is that if you own the tiny, tiny iPhone 12 mini, it's actually too short to charge it. So you kind of have to put a spacer like I'm showing you in this clip, or you could put it down here um, it'll charge, there's another pad there. But that's kind of a fatal flaw for this Logitech Powered. Now the other thing I kind of realized was that as much as I love where the Apple Watch strap is, I kind of default to loops. And so this is a uh, leather loop. This one's not much of a problem because it'll flick up. But that looks awesome. But if you use something like this Sport Loop, you'll actually have the watch strap kind of drag on the ground or the table that you've uh, set it on. And so. That might be annoying for some people, uh, but I figure I'd just point that out. Now, before we talk about all the charging tests, I do want to point out, apart from the Apple product, all other chargers, except for the Nomad Base Station Pro, uses the standard Qi charging setup. The Base Station Pro uses era free power technology with builds on Qi charging by allowing you to charge technically anywhere on that era charge pad. Now, most products in this video have one coil per charge pad, whereas the Nomad Base Station Pro has 18, which means that your iPhone or any device will charge in any orientation, which is pretty cool. From our perspective, era's approach of charge anywhere is the exact opposite to what Apple did with the MagSafe, which is to ensure a strong connection with the charge pad through the iPhone. Somebody on Instagram told me that I should review this, so I went and bought it and was pretty excited to see this thing in action. This thing cost me $200. Hey Monty, are we happy that we spent $200 on this product? What do you think? I think that's a no, guys. Anyways, on to full send charging. Now full send charging for this video basically means dumping as many dead devices on each charging unit and measuring how quickly one of these devices charges. For each product, we measured the time it took an iPhone mini to go from 10 to 50% with the Wi-Fi on and the screen turned all the way up. Once we got our data, we drain all the devices as best as we could. We'd leave the AirPods out, drain the Apple Watch by turning on a workout and flashlight and just leaving it there, and draining the iPhone mini by recording 4K video with the torch on it or any other iPhone in that manner. We did this several times for each product and averaged out the results. 
The fastest chargers in this group included the Apple MagSafe Duo, which came on a first, followed by the Logitech Powered and the Nomad Base Station. Now, don't get too excited about the MagSafe Duo because charging the iPhone by itself using a normal MagSafe charger was almost twice as fast. To charge the iPhone 12 mini from 10 to 50 on the MagSafe Duo took a little over an hour. Using the normal MagSafe charger, it only takes 30 minutes, and with a wired connection with a 20 watt charger, it only takes 18. If you're looking to charge more than just your device and watch, well, this top three list will include that no-name Amazon charger, which is kind of surprising, but kind of not. The slowest charger in this grouping was the Nomad Base Station Pro. None of the tests resulted in my iPhone 12 mini being charged from 10 to 50. I think one test got the iPhone to 48% before it stopped charging. One of the tests I did, I left it on for 12 plus hours and the Base Station Pro still didn't get any device to 100%. Now the next worst product in terms of just full send charging is the Belkin 3-in-1 Boost Charge. It also performed incredibly poorly and it's crazy that Apple still buys stuff from Belkin given that this product took almost three hours to charge an Apple Watch, an iPhone mini, and the AirPods, which is crazy. Now one of the things we wanted to see was if the number of devices connecting to a charging pad would affect the charge speeds. Every charger has a maximum wattage, so it can only provide so much power to a bunch of different devices. For example, an iPhone with Qi charging consumes at most 7.5 watts of power. The Apple Watch and AirPods both consume 5 watts, so to technically charge all those, all those devices at the fastest possible speed, you would need at least 17.5 watts. Now on paper, there wasn't any product where the wattages did not match the supposed number of devices that you you could charge with that product. But because we're reviewers, we had to see if what's on paper matches real life. We did the same charge test as the full send charging, but with just the iPhone mini by itself. And how did the speeds compare? Now, I was a bit disappointed with that outcome because I thought most companies would have figured out a way to keep charge rates constant regardless of how many devices were attached to it. If the output from the power supply has enough wattage to charge the devices, shouldn't the speeds be consistent? Apparently, I ask way too much from my tech. From our solo charging test, the fastest was the MagSafe Duo at 40 minutes, the Nomad Base Station came in at 47 minutes, and the Logitech Power at 64 minutes, and the fourth place going to the Amazon branded charger at 67 minutes. Those are your top four, uh, technically top three non-Apple, uh, with Mophie, Skosh, Anchor, Belkin, and Pataka filling in the spots between the fourth and last. And the last place goes to that $200 Behemoth Base Station Pro by Nomad. So there is kind of an asterisk with the testing that I've done with the Nomad Base Station Pro. And don't get me wrong, the Base Station, normal Base Station, great product. This Pro, if you're planning on getting it, I would actually hold off because there's a couple of things. I did talk to uh, Nomad customer service and they were saying that sometimes the screen will flicker. That's apparently normal. Um, they also said that on the iPhone 12s, the MagSafe magnets might interfere with the uh, charge pad. And so I went and did a test with the iPhone 11 just to see if it was any better. Uh, well, that result's coming up soon. I also did the same test with a Galaxy uh, device and it's kind of the same thing. Like this product, it's kind of neat. You can update the firmware by plugging into your computer. I like the potential of what this offers, but as of right now, it is not that good or at all. It took 18,000 seconds to charge the iPhone 11 Pro to 50%. Now the iPhone 11 Pro has a battery capacity around 3,300 milliamps and the iPhone 12 mini has around 2,200 milliamps. So if we take two thirds of 18,000 seconds, that's still 12,000 seconds, which is three hours and around 20 minutes. That is so long. You could charge your iPhone twice over with a normal fast charger in that period, if not more. The final kicker to this overpriced failure is the fact that the pad will make your screen look funny. There's like waves on my iPhone 12. And in this time lapse, you can definitely see that my screen just changes. Stuff is happening on the screen on my iPhone while it's charging. Facing. Does anybody else find this insane? $200 and this is what you get? Now there are kind of three to four kickers when it comes to these products that really, really annoy me. And the first one is that some of these products just do way too much. Like this Pataka product, this Skaji product, it's just so many things. Do you really need to have like eight to nine products plugged, electronic products plugged into this thing and put it right beside your head? A lot of these products I feel are being used, you know, for overnight purposes. So do you really need to have a command and control center plugged into 
your bed stand right beside you. It just doesn't really make any sense to me, especially when, you know, this Pataka thing is designed for you to go travel, but the size of this entire product, you might actually be able to get away with bringing a power bar and all the cables and chargers and still have it to be smaller than this Pataka Air Omni Light. Like it just, it really, really boggles my mind. Like, and the second kicker is the fact that some of these products are actually incomplete. Like you're buying a charger so that you can go and charge in addition to what you have already. But some of these products, like this Apple thing, this Anchor thing, you have to go bring your own cable. So like it's like a two and a half charger, two and a half times charger. Like it's not getting you anything better. You still have to bring your own stuff. It's like going to a really fancy store, ordering risotto and then having to bring your own stock. Like it just doesn't make any sense to me. And porchetta, oh, and chanterelle mushrooms. You have to bring your own bruschetta and your own chanterelle mushrooms. Like it just, I don't like, seriously, who is like dropping $160 on this Apple product only to have to tip Apple for another $20 or $30 to buy the 20 watt charger? Like it just, it just, like that really, really bothers me. And heavy cream, I think I'm gonna skip the risotto. All right, we're getting risotto apparently. No. <laughs> You're really that hungry? We just had like, <laughs> now the third kicker for me is that some of these products come with extra ports like this nomad base station nope not this one that one's uh, this normal base station comes with an extra port so does this pro the scotch product so you can actually charge your iphone faster plugged into that port than you can with the wireless charging and so that kind of just defeats the entire purpose. Like, why would I do something slower when I know I can do something faster? Oh man, just... delivery isn't free. Did you want anything? Like, we're doing a video, right? Well, just, all right, I'll get you something. <laughs> so the fourth kicker, did you order your food? Yeah, it's done, ordered. It's done? <laughs> uh, the fourth kicker is the fact that some of these things are just bloody expensive. Like, we live in Canada, so we have to pay everything Canadian dollars. This Nomad Base Station Pro, 200 US, 260 Canadian, plus the $30 of import fees. This was so expensive. And normally, I wouldn't bring this up, but because we spent $1,400 on all these things, my butt's a little chapped. Because like, premium product should come with premium functionality. Stuff like this doesn't. Even stuff like this doesn't. I just, I get annoyed, but that's kind of why we're doing all these reviews because we don't want you guys to get annoyed. All right, I'm done. Screw this. Aaron's so dramatic. <laughs> so if you're planning on getting one of these products, make sure you use one of our links. This channel's unsponsored. This content is unsponsored. So yeah, I spent $1,400 on all these chargers. We've been testing these things. I think for at least two months. We started this a while back and we've just been blowing up our iPhone 12 minis, discharging and recharging them. And so we do this because that's just the right way to do a review. Like I just, I cannot fathom just promoting one product because I'm getting paid to, because that's just not who I am. So you wanna keep seeing more of this unbiased technological review stuff, subscribe to the channel, get your stuff through our links or go to our Patreon page and give us some support there because I love doing it, but it costs a pretty penny, especially when products don't work out. So our final rankings are based on four scores, with the first being the score of the product in terms of design and functionality, rank for the different charging tests, and finally a score for the charge consistency, which is a difference in speeds when charging a device by itself and when it's fully loaded. We added in the charge consistency because a product should be able to charge your device uh, at the same speed regardless. You okay? <laughs> I'll be fine. Anyway, regardless of how many things are plugged into it, uh, if a company is going to put in extra ports to a product, it better have the technology to ensure a consistent charging experience. For charge consistency, the best products were the Logitech powered and the Scotch based links. So after we added up all the scores, there was a tie for first, there was a tie for second, and in third place was actually this uh, Amazon no name brand, this KK. <laughs> <laughs> Such a weird name uh, brand despite the fact that like it has a terrible design the functionality is borderline terrible the charge speeds and the charge consistency are uh, 
quite good actually. But it is one of the cheaper products and also you don't actually get to charge your AirPods wirelessly. It's still a wired connection. But, but the lightning cable on the KKM charger isn't MiFi certified. So you get what you pay for. I personally wouldn't. Um, the third place would actually go to the Mophie 3 in 1. This one? Mm hmm. Now, tied for second place is the Skosh Base Links and the uh, Nomad Base Station. Not the Base Station Pro, just the normal Base Station. The Skosh Base Links offers the best design fu and functionality and charges consistently, though the charge speeds are kind of in the middle of the pack. But it does offer a lot of extra functionality for those who want to charge more than just a phone, watch, and headphones. Now, if you don't need to charge an entire command and control center by your head at night, if it's just you or you just got your watch, AirPods, and your uh, device. Nope, not this one. I keep picking that one up. <laughs> We go with the Nomad Base Station. This is a solidly built product. The charge speeds are pretty consistent. Good all around pick. Now tied for first is the Logitech powered as well as the MagSafe Duo. And between these two products, there's actually a caveat uh, <laughs> for the tie. I personally go with this Logitech powered. Now, I will say that there is nothing that we've tested that compares in terms of speed with the MagSafe Duo, but you can only charge two things and you gotta tip Apple and buy a charger with it. Apple tax. <laughs> now the main reason that the Logitech powered is tied for first and is not first is because of the iPhone 12 mini size issues. But if you don't have that device, then I would go with the Logitech powered. Uh, the powered was one of the last products that we bought and we're generally really impressed with it. It's a good product. In fact, I bought a Logitech mouse. I've always bought Logitech mouses and the last one I bought, it's pretty awesome. It's like a old person one because your wrist hurts kind of mouse. <laughs> Is that why it has that shape? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's all we got for this video. Questions, comments, leave them down there. There is one product that we are missing, which is the updated Belkin powered up boost charge. They don't sell it in Canada and I couldn't find any way to get it. But if the Belkin version, if this is any indication of what the charge speeds are for that product, yeah, it's not that great. Uh, so first time watching one of my videos, our videos, click subscribe. Uh, that's kind of all I got. Anything else, Monty? Thanks for watching.